All right. So I see that some um, some of us have joined. I think there's uh, seven or uh, some people that have, have joined in. So nice to see everyone. Hopefully this time, unlike uh, our last webinar, uh, actually will work a little bit better. Um, if anyone has any problems with uh, hearing me or the audio, um, you know, just let me know. There's there's a way to actually chat here uh, on the window. And if everyone's seeing my screen, um, it's it's quite easy to do. Um, so really at a at a high level what we're uh, what I'm planning to cover during this uh, webinar and it should be relatively brief um, and it will also be available as a recording after um, is again kind of to go over the introduction uh, of what TrendMD is um, how some of you guys are, are already making use of it um, and then kind of go uh, from there um, so I think I have also one of my uh, customer success staff online, um, Devin. So I'll let him kind of introduce himself. Um, I'm just going to unmute him. Devin, can you hear me? Hello. Yeah. Yes, I'm going to come through loud and clear. Perfect. So you can uh, just briefly introduce yourself. So greetings, everyone. My name is Devin. I uh, am just currently onboarding as one of the new customer success staff. I uh, hopefully look forward to hearing from you in the upcoming weeks. Great, and I also will provide uh, Devin's contact information, um, you know, going forward. Um, Devin, I'm going to meet you off now, and I'll, I'll chime you in in a minute. All right, so, okay, so just to get started here, um, so a brief background, trying to be at a high level what we're doing and, and the way that we're working with um, Ingenta Connect and, and all you guys um, is a way to help you um, distribute content online um, and uh, grow your readership. Um, so very briefly, we started off primarily actually in the medical space. Um, my background, I started off as a, uh, as a physician and I left clinical practice in, in 2014. Uh, to run Trinity full time. And essentially what we do is, again, we recommend links to content uh, across medical and scholarly sites. Um, some of the other publishers outside of the Ingenta Connect platform that use us um, include Elsevier, Nature, uh, and many others. And I'll just frame this right off the bat with kind of what it looks like. Um, anyone that's uh, involved in the pilot has probably seen us here. Um, you can see that um, basically the way it works is that on one side of the widget, so on the left-hand side, is content from the other uh, Ingenta Connect uh, partners. And on the other side of the widget uh, is content from third-party sites. Um, you know, and both of which actually, both the left-hand side and the right-hand side, um, you guys actually have uh, control over in terms of the content that ultimately gets shown. And over the next uh, little while, I'll actually show you guys um, exactly uh, how to make use of that, that function. Um, and then uh, and, and go from there. Devin, I'm gonna actually keep you unmuted. Um, so you can actually hop in if you have any other uh, things to add about anything, I'll let you, you can always hop in, so. Absolutely. So in terms of our, our value proposition to publishers, and this will also explain kind of the model and how it works, um, when you install, when a publisher um, is using our widget, Again, there's two sides, um, one side being in the blue, um, being uh, internal links or, or, or links within uh, your network of sites. And the purpose of the, the links in the blue are to recirculate traffic um, both within your articles that you've published in the past, uh, as well as the other journals that we have indexed from you. Um, so keeping people discovering content that they may have not known that they're looking for um, uh, through, through, the, through the research process. Um, and on the other side of the widget, uh, or of the platform, it's in the green. And the way this works uh, is that every time you refer a visitor to a third-party site outside of Ingenta Connect, um, you're earning traffic credits. Now, those traffic credits are used to promote links to your own content on third-party sites. So you have a way, this is almost like an exchange system, um, where you send visitors and you receive visitors back. Um, and the point being is that the visitors that you're receiving um, may not know about your, the content that you've produced. Um, and the nice thing is, is that you're, you're getting your content um, in context. So, for example, content from your journals may show up on, you know, the BMJ journals. In this case, this is a neurology journal. And it would show up here on the uh, right-hand side. Um, 
you know, or on any of our other um, sites. And in, in terms of the number of sites in the network now, um, you know, we're, we're increasing uh, all, all week on week. And then there's uh, over uh, 1,300 sites that are registered uh, in our network. So one of the questions that, that often comes up, and again, if anyone does have questions, I know there's lots of attendees here. If anyone does have questions, you can always uh, post them. Um, but one of the questions that we get often is, you know, how do we actually generate the recommendations? So most of the time when people are faced with, or they're looking at recommendations, um, most of the time what we see in academia is that the recommendations are based on relatedness. In our case, the recommendations are actually not. They're primarily based on click data that we collect uh, from users. So every time a user um, engages with our widget, we're collecting that data. And over time, the placements of the links change uh, based on uh, you, based on that click data that we collect. So there, it's a it's a very dynamic system, and what that allows us to do is find kind of the best links uh, for each um, individual, which is great for increasing the click through rate, increasing uh, the number of readers. So. At this point, what I'm going to show you um, is the, kind of the core Ingenta Connect um, um, analytics dashboard. Now, each one, each one of you um, uh, that is participating in the pilot have your journals registered. What we haven't done yet is sent out access to the individual, uh, so your individual sites. Um, so some of you I know that have registered, you know, multiple journals, um, and some of you has, you know, one journal. So the next phase right now, which we're going into, is to give you access to your, your, you know, the analytics associated with your um, uh, sites. So just to give an example here, um, you know, this, I'll just pick this as an example. If you had access to only um, this, for example, you can find the metrics associated specifically with allergy and uh, rhinology. Okay. And when you're on your own uh, dashboard here and you log in, the three core metrics to pay attention to um, is, number one, the additional visitors acquired, number two, the additional article views that we've generated, uh, and number three, uh, the revenue or the click revenue that you've earned uh, off of every time um, someone clicks on one of these, uh, these links that are presented, third-party links. And I'll kind of explain how this works. So... So long as your credit balance is above zero, links to your content will be seen on third-party sites. So the way it works is that every time you get a visitor, your credit balance goes down by one. Every time you refer a visitor to a third-party site, your credit balance will go up, and it, you, and it goes up by 0.5. Um, the, this column here, the additional article views generated, is in reference to, or it's a, basically it collects, data on every time somebody clicks on one of your articles, every time you receive an article, or receive a click rather, um, from a journal within Ingenta Connect, it will get counted as additional article views generated. Um, and with TrendMD, you don't actually, your credit balance is not affected by this metric. Um, the only time your credit balance goes down or it goes up um, is when you receive uh, or deliver visitors uh, from third party sites. Now, what we haven't talked about yet, and again, because it's mainly in the pilot phase with Ingenta Connect, but if, for example, you want to promote your content from your journals, or let's say you're the owner of this, of allergy and rhinology, and you want to promote some of these articles, um, what you can do um, is, is actually set a weekly budget for traffic. And the reason why you would do that is because, in this case, for this journal, you're only earning a certain amount of, of traffic credits. And if you do want more visitors, it's literally as simple as uh, setting a weekly budget for traffic. Um, and the window should pop up next. And basically putting in your, your payment information. And again, the reason why you would do that is that if, let's say, you, you set a budget for you know, $50 or, or a week, you would be, your credit balance would go up by 50. And then you can use that to promote your articles. Um, and when you actually look at your articles here in this section, what's nice about this, and I'm just going to move this screen around, is that you can actually get the metrics for each one of your individual articles. And I'll show you exactly what I mean here. So what you do, so let's say you're, you're promoting this article. Um, you look into this sponsored, so you change the radio tab from all to sponsored. And then what you can do here 
is you can sort you can sort these articles by clicks. And what I'm doing here is I'm trying to find the articles that have been clicked on the most in the network. So you can see here the article from this journal that has received the most clicks um, is this article related to allergic reaction to mint, which makes sense. If you click on the the backlinks um, on this, what you can actually what we're actually seeing is where those clicks came from. Okay, so in this case, this article, allergic reaction to mints, we got two clicks from a site called Medical News Today. Um, so at some point, visitors came from uh, this site and they were referred to this article. Um, and let's say you wanted to promote this more, um, all you have to do is go to sponsor, and this will actually sponsor the article. Um, so, and when you sponsor an article, so long as your credit balance is above zero, links to the content will be seen, you know, on those sites again. And again, you'll be able to get visitors. Every time you get a visitor, your credit balance goes down by one. So the important point with this is that um, you're not, you're only paying for visitors you actually receive. Um, you don't pay for impressions or, or when people see the links, you only pay for actually when they actually hit your content, uh, which is important. So um, the other thing that I'll briefly mention is that TrendMB is not just based on um, clicks. So we're, we, you know, we're, what we do is that after we send a visitor to a site, um, so let's say we send a visitor to, to your, you know, your journal content, we're measuring things like um, what happens after they, after they click. So things like bounce rates, um, the number, the, the time that the, the individual has spent on the page, um, whether or not they viewed multiple pages, and also the percent retention of those visitors. Uh, so whether or not they come back after we initially refer them. Um, so that allows us, we use that data to actually, again, as a guide as to where the recommendations go, uh, which is very important. So Devin, I've been talking lots. <laughs> Do you, um, so being a new, new person, Devin, um, I'm going to unmute you. Um, being a new person, Devin, do you ha do you think any publishers would have any questions about what I've been talking? I've been talking too fast, or what do you think? I might have lost Devin there. Devin. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> so I think the big thing to um, to always keep in mind is it's never just about you know how many views are we driving. It's how many people are you're getting the repeats. Yeah. And I think that's the, the real opportunity here is because we have such relevant recommendations, you're building out the customer base. Right, exactly. So I think that's, that's an important point. And that goes back to kind of what we, what we uh, try to do, which is all about more readership than clicks. Um, so the, the, the system is very much optimized um, for growing readership rather than clicks in the sense that we collect that data, what happens after they click on an article. Meaning, if as I was saying, if they're referred to your site, um, and let's say there's an article that refers a lot of people, but the people that end up coming to your content end up bouncing or have very uh, low amount of time spent on page. Um, we don't actually recommend that content as much as we did, and we don't show the same content to the same users. Um, so that, that helps us kind of optimize. Um, one thing that often comes up, publishers always ask this, is how are we doing this? Like what is the, what is the actual um, way that we kind of figure out, you know, who's a user and who's not? So to be very clear, um, when someone engages with our widget, um, we use kind of a digital fingerprint of their device. So what that means is, is that there's lots of different settings on one's browser, um, and we collect those things like cookies, and that, that way when that user comes back, even if they're logging into uh, the content through their institution, we're able to, to figure out, okay, this is an, a unique device, this is a unique user, and then we were able to present them with content um, that they may like. And that kind of experience is very similar to what you've seen on, on, on Netflix uh, at an individual level or Amazon um, kind of at an aggregate level where you know, people that have read these articles also uh, may like yours. So that's the main stuff that I want to get across in terms of the analytics. Um, so being these three, um, these are the three core. But I'm going to show you some, some, something else which I think is important. Um, so I'm going to illustrate this here. So let me just go to this article. So I'm going to open this up. 
Okay, so take this allergic rhinitis. Okay, so in this case, let's say I, on this specific journal, let's say I want to change the recommendations. So what I would do here is I go into setup. I'm going to move this thing in my way. Okay, I'm going to go into setup and I'm going to set up these recommendations. What I'm trying to do right now is I'm going to try to, to, to illustrate what I can do in terms of customizing the content. So right now, when you log into this recommendation setup, there's three buttons here. There's block sponsored content, include third party content, and exclude in-network content. So excluding in-network content, all that means is that Right now, as we talked about, there's 96 other Ingenta Connect journals. Let's say, hypothetically, I only want to show content from allergy and rhinology in this case. What I would do is I click on the status and I block everything, and I only unclick allergy and rhinology. And if I click submit here, and I wait. <laughs> So now what I've done is I've blocked all this content. Now if I go back to the site here, if I go to this uh, allergy and um, uh, uh, rhinology, you can see here there's been various content you can see on this side. I'm just going to zoom in so everyone can see from different um, journals. Now if I refresh this and I wait for the latency, you can see now what I've done is I've limited the content to only pick from allergy and rhinology. There's some weird characters there, but the point is, is that uh, all this content is now being curated from this only this individual journal. Um, and you can do that um, at a journal level, or you can do that on across your sites. Um, but I'm just going to undo these settings now, um, so I can restore it. But the point is, is that uh, this allows you to kind of uh, segregate traffic on 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 a journal by journal basis. Um, which can be quite powerful. Oops. So the same thing can be done um, if you if you want to, for example, I don't know why this is not unblocking, but I'll get back to that. <laughs> um, if you want to, for example, block sponsored content, what you can do is you can block individual articles or block individual sites. And you know this is a listing of actually all the sites in the Trendomy network. Um, we'll get better at this. The problem is right now I find that um, it's, you can't actually block at a publisher level. You actually have to block at an individual uh, journal level. Um, but the point is, is that if, for example, if on, on this site you don't want content from Medscape to show up, hypothetically, what you would do is you would simply find Medscape here uh, and block it uh, from appearing. Um, and that gives you, again, control over the types of content that you do want and do not want to be shown. So that's pretty much the, um, the high level in terms of what I wanted to get across on, uh, on this. This kind of gives a, an overview of, um, you know, of, of, uh, of some of the features. Um, the last thing, and I guess I'll, I'll, I'll end on this because I think that um, just to give kind of a sneak peek of where we're where we're going with all this. Um, right now, every, the Ingenta Connect and all the publishers on the platform are currently using the free um, software. Um, so the free software comes with everything you've seen. So basically the ability to set a weekly budget um, and, and also have access to your dashboard and the analytics um, and, and, and do a number of things. And I actually forgot, this actually reminds me. I'm just going to quickly show something here. Um, one of the other features that I didn't mention was that you also, with this dashboard, you also have the ability to promote articles um, internally. Um, so for example, let's say you want to promote this allergic reaction to mint article, uh, and you want this to show up more uh, on, uh, on your journal uh, or in your network of journals. What you can do here is you can actually set this, um, mark this as an editor's choice. And when I do that, what happens is, is that in the recommendations, um, you will see the article uh, in the number one spot more often than not. Um, meaning that article still has to have relevance to, to, to a user, but the relevancy threshold uh, is lower. So more people will see it, and it will be a great way to, to promote um, the, uh, the actual article. So just very briefly going over this. Um, so one of the things um, that some publishers might be interested in is uh, having a little bit more of these features that I've been describing. 
So, for example, um, with our professional plans, um, at starting at you know $100 a month per site, depending on how big the site is, um, in exchange for that, you you get some of those credits that you can use. So you get 100 uh, additional credits. Um, you can do things that you can where you can sponsor and unsponsor articles on an article basis. So if you want to you know promote an individual article, for example, uh, you can do that on the professional plan. On the starter plan now. Um, technically speaking, you you actually you, uh, we are the ones that actually manage which content gets promoted. So I was showing you all those features, but um, that's part of a lot of them are actually part of the professional plan. Um, and you also get more advanced analytics, uh, which I haven't shown you yet. Um, which on the next webinar I'll t I'll, I'll take you through. Um, but the advanced analytics kind of tells you a little bit more about geographically where your where your content is being consumed, um, where people are coming from, uh, what journals, what publishers, what articles. Um, so that uh, that's also part of that, um, and um, I think that's mainly the stuff that I wanted to get across. Um, Devin, do, do you think there's anything else that uh, would be helpful to to kind of explain over this call? I think you've covered all of it. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now, because we have some some more time, um, there there I know there's right now there's uh, ten attendees here. Um, everyone is muted, but there is a way to um, uh, actually ask questions. Um, so if anyone has any questions, um, I, can, uh, I can open this up now, actually. Let's see. So let's see if I start unmuting. So I know there's these, these things next to people's. Okay, so um, if there is no questions, um, the best way to contact um, a Devin or I, because we're also available to talk on you know, an individual uh, publisher basis, is um, I'll, I'll leave my email and I'll, I'll, um, I'll definitely send out um, uh, an email to some of your account managers so you do have uh, you know, our contact information. Um, but the, the plan it really is over the next couple of weeks is to give you guys access to your individual journals um, so you can kind of play around with the dashboard um, and figure out kind of how that uh, how that works for you. Um, and again, a lot of the, a lot of the metrics that you see here, for example, it's all available to you when you uh, log in and I'll make sure those logins get to you guys. All right. So what I'm going to do, actually, I'm just going to loop, loop in some of these people in one second. Great. So I'll stick around here. Um, if anyone does have any questions, um, I'll just run my screen. I'll stick around for the next few minutes. Devin, you're, you're welcome to stay or hop off. <laughs> So I see a question here from, from Joan, is a sponsored element uh, part of the free package? Uh, yes, so the way it's working now um, is that in Genta Connect, um, every um, publisher is currently showing um, sponsored links or affiliate content. Uh, what that means is, is that 
the Ingenta Connect uh, uh, kind of sites are earning credits. So yes, so as you can see, many of the uh, journals or uh, you know at an aggregate level, if you look at it at all websites, um, Ingenta Connect has already received um, a number of visitors. You can see you've received already 2,878 visitors, and those visitors have come to um, you know various uh, sites or various journals. And for the individual publishers and journal owners, um, you can actually, when you have when you know when you have access to your your individual dashboards, you can actually drill down and see how many visitors you've received. So in this case, this this specific journal about cell cell med has received 21 visitors, and again, these 21 were subsidized by the credits. Uh, that have been earned across all the sites. Um, but um, journal owners and publishers have the ability to set weekly budgets for their suite of, of, of journals. And if they want more visitors, they can do that. They can set that. Um, but the sponsor element is, is part of the free package at its base. Thanks. Correct. Yes. So, Joan, yeah, in answer to that, yes. So, so in this case, in Cell Med, um, these 21 visitors, uh, yes, they, they, they've received um, 21 visitors from other sites in the network that they otherwise would not have received. Uh, that's exactly right. And you can actually figure out where those visitors came from. So, if you go to clicks here um, and you um, just go to sponsored. You can actually go to clicks, and you can figure out exactly where those clicks came from uh, on an article basis. So you can see, for example, in this case, uh, this is about um, uh, therapeutic of olfaction, and you can go to the backlinks column, which is what I was showing um, earlier, and you can see exactly where this article has been located in the network. So in this case, the two clicks came from another uh, similar one, Medical News Today, which is a um, a site about uh, medicine. So you can see that the two clicks in this case came from here. And if you want to drill down the list, you can see, go to the visit the backlinks, and you can see uh, where those new visitors came from, from sites outside of the Agenda Connect uh, platform. So for, for Nicola, yes, um, what I can do, um, is I can send you, there's actually an, an initial video that, I, that uh, we produced last time, um, and I can send that to you as well. Yes, so these, um, so in answer to Joan, yes, I should say, uh, these presentations, so both the first presentation um, and this presentation will ultimately be shown on, or is on, on YouTube. Um, so if you go to our YouTube channel, um, so I'll just bring that up here. Um, let's go here. You can see that the first Agenda Connect video uh, was, was is located here. So I'll send out this link to make sure that you have access to the channel. So I'll I'll, I'll put this up um, uh, at the end of the uh, at the end of the presentation.
Okay. So I think that's that's all for now. Um, I know that Ruth uh, Joan uh, is from uh, Intent Connect. So if anyone if anyone has any questions, I think the only one left here is uh, Nicola. Um, we will we will end for now, and I'll I'll put this up on uh, again on the YouTube channel. Um, I'm just going to unmute you. Hi, Joan. I'm bringing you in here. <laughs> do, you, do you have any other questions, or are we good to uh, put this up on YouTube now? Oh, no, that was really very good and very helpful. Thank you. Okay, I think great. I'll probably do the presentation again. <laughs> Sound good. But, you know, sounds I'm good. in the room with, with Joan. Yes, he came in late, so he is kind of sitting with me. So some of the questions were actually from him, not me, but <laughs> shared. Sounds good. Okay, so I think uh, that, that, that this is, at least the audio was working much better than the last time, so I'm happy about that. <laughs> no, it's much better, much smoother. Yeah, that's Actually, good. Actually, last question, um, yeah. which uh, couldn't be able to type for, was um, do we have, I mean, the trial has now been going for getting up sick for two months. Mm -hmm. Do we have any kind of overall feeling for the kind of increase that um, visitors have been acquired by the, the participants in the trial. Yes. So we. So I think last time I sent you out some aggregate statistics. Um, we haven't yeah. updated them yet, but I can. Um, let me actually take a look at that. Um, last time. So last time, last time we updated this on the, on the aggregate level was on November first. So this is actually a good time to look at it. So there was a, tra a slight traffic lift. I would imagine that this month there was probably a bigger bump. Um, so for individual publishers, there's been some that I think that has seen as much as 15% and some that are smaller. Um, so there's been a, a pretty wide range, but overall there's been uh, a lift across the Ingenta Connect sites for sure. Great. Thank you. So, and that's, again, a lot of this is, what's nice about this is, is these are all on the free plan. Um, so one of the, the, um, the keys is, is that once, obviously, there, there might be some publishers that do want more readership, they have the ability to set uh, balances or, or credits and purchase credits and increase the readership for, for, um, more fully. Um, and I don't know if I sent you guys this blog post, but one of the, there are a number of publishers that make use of us uh, quite a bit, but um, BMJ has done quite a bit of work with us, um, and they've increased their article views on some of their platform as much as, in this case, it was 28%, but we've seen as increases as high as 60%. And again, it depends on how they want to use this from the marketing perspective. And the goal is with some Ingenta Connect publishers uh, to kind of get into that, uh, that mode as well. <clears throat> great. Well, thanks very much indeed. Okay, great. All right, so I'll make sure... Mm -hmm. from Intellect. Mm -hmm. So I'll make sure I'll make sure this presentation is available online, um, and then uh, we'll go from there. Great. Sounds good. Okay, nice talking with you guys. Thanks ever so much. Bye bye. Bye now. Bye.